Welcome again, a happy new year, and a welcome to our tonight's speaker, who is Fletcher Richman, formerly HALP, now at Lessin. Do I pronounce it correctly? Was it HALP or HELP? I, I never HALP. HALP, yeah. HALP. 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 So Fletcher yeah. Richman from HALP, uh, now at Lessin, because HALP was bought by Atlassian, and he joins us tonight from Austin in Texas um, to tell us a bit about conversational ticketing. So how do you integrate your ticket system with your uh, instant messaging platform, uh, team chat tool, uh, and how, can, how do, can you use more than one team chat tool if you like? And then without further ado, I'm handing over to you, Fletcher. Thanks so much. Hey, everybody. Um, great to be here. Uh, as uh, Jorg mentioned, I uh, was the CEO and co-founder of HALP. Um, we were acquired by Atlassian in May of 2020. Um, so I've been uh, an Atlassian uh, for almost nine months now. Um, got to know uh, the whole organization and, and all the great people that work there. So i um, super excited to be here and, and tell you a little bit more about HALP and uh, the, the way that we think about uh, doing conversational ticketing. Um, so just to start out, uh, to, to give you some context of why help exists. Um, here's some, some big fancy numbers for you. Uh, these are sort of the two leading uh, chat tools that folks are using in the workplace. There's really a massive shift happening in the way that we communicate in the workplace that's happened over the past couple of years, but was really accelerated by, uh, by COVID. So um, traditional communication in the workplace was happening via email. Uh, I don't know if folks remember even anymore, but we all used to email each other back and forth when we wanted to get things done uh, with our coworkers. That has now pretty much completely shifted towards uh, messaging being the primary way that we communicate in the workplace. Um, and these two, two uh, um, tools, Slack and Microsoft Teams are the leaders in the industry. Um, these stats that I have here are from actually um, kind of early in 2020. So these numbers have accelerated quite a bit, quite dramatically as everybody's moved to um, distributed and, and remote based work. So tens and even I think Microsoft Teams recent number they announced was 120 million, 115 million uh, daily active users. So um, really a, a incredible growth for, for both of these products. And I think most of us at this point are using uh, one or the other of them to, to get our work done. So uh, unfortunately, as of this recording, Slack is currently down. <laughs> so even if everybody on the on the call is a Slack user, you're not a Slack user today because no one is. Um, and I'll, I'll be showing a demo of help uh, in Microsoft Teams. Um, so uh, cool. So we've got, it looks like a bunch of Slack users, of course. Um, so all of you can't get your work done right now. And that's why you decided to join this webinar. Um, which is great. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, but yeah, so I'll, I'll show off how in, in Microsoft Teams, it works pretty similarly in Slack. So you'll, you'll get a good sense for it and a good feel for it. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, these two tools have become really the predominant way that we communicate and, and the way that we uh, connect with our coworkers. And if you think about ticketing and the way that we manage doing IT support or any sort of internal support, those have been traditionally based in email as well. And so what HALP has done is we've brought the idea of doing ticketing and, and getting support inside of uh, a company into these chat tools. We really rethought the entire way that a help desk works uh, and brought it inside of your chat tool. So you'll kind of see that in a demo that, that we've, we've really rethought uh, everything from the ground up. And what we've seen is that help is uh, not only useful for your traditional teams that need a ticketing solution, which is traditionally IT and operations teams, but it's also being used by all sorts of organizations inside of companies, everything from legal to finance to security, HR, all these different departments need a way to manage internal requests because they all use these chat tools and those are ubiquitous across companies. Uh, we found that uh, help is, is very useful across many different departments. It's also useful across all different sizes of organizations. So you can see here a few of our highlight customers. We work with everything from fast growing startups like Webflow, 
uh, to fintech, large fintech organizations like Nubank, um, up into the Fortune 500, companies like Adobe and GitHub uh, that use help every day. One really fun customer that we have uh, is Slack themselves. So Slack obviously is a power user of their own products um, and they use help to manage their internal requests. Um, they use it across not only what they call business operations, which is their IT department, but also across dozens of other departments inside of their organization. And since rolling out HALP, uh, which they did in July of 2019, so um, have been a, a customer of ours for quite a while now, they've seen really great improvements in their handle time. So the time it takes from when a ticket is open to when it's resolved, they've seen a reduction of over 50% in, in ticket resolution handle time, uh, which is great, really, really amazing results for them. Another great customer of ours is a company out of San Francisco called Strava, which is a startup. They use help across finance, HR, legal, IT, all of their different departments. It's really the go-to way to open a help desk ticket at, uh, at Strava. Um, and they saw an improvement in their response times of over 90%. So initial response time, how quickly they're answering questions, uh, pretty dramatic. Uh, improvement in in that response time. And those are the really the two things that we're trying to help our customers improve is how quickly are you answering questions and how quickly are you actually resolving those questions? If you can do those two things really well, then you're making your company more productive. You're making your whole organization uh, really a lot more efficient, which is the, the goal of, of these internal service desk uh, type use cases. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hop into a demo. Like I said, I'm going to just do a demo of Microsoft Teams, given that Slack is down. All right, so for, for folks who haven't seen it, this is the Microsoft Teams interface. Uh, we have several different teams here uh, it, that uh, I, I'm a member of. Um, one of them is just called Acme Corp. This is sort of our general uh, a place that all of our, our employees are uh, active in. We might be chatting in these different channels. Teams sort of has this idea of channels within a team and then direct messages that you can send uh, as well. We have this second team, which is called Acme Triage. So this is what we call a triage team in Slack. This would be a triage channel. It's a private uh, group that is only available to the folks on the, the IT team or whatever service team that are actually gonna be answering and managing these questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into one of our, uh, our channels inside that all of our employees are members of called Get Help Here. And I'm gonna go ahead and post in here. This is sort of what we, we typically see. You have this public channel, people go into the public channel and they ask a question, hey, I need my password reset for GitHub, please. And this employee posts into this channel. And at this point, uh, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and make a ticket out of their message directly. Uh, you can do this in Teams. You can see here, I just click the little more options, three dots right here. There's a similar option inside of Slack. And when you click that, you can see this option here to create a ticket in help. So I'm gonna create a ticket. What that does is it automatically pops up a form right inside of Teams or Slack, and you can go ahead and choose what type of question you have. So let's say I have an IT question. Uh, if I select that, uh, we can have additional fields that I can fill out. We'll go ahead and look at our other form here. Uh, let's say I just had a general request. Uh, here you can see we have a bunch of different fields for the user to fill out. Things like category, uh, this is a vegetable, and uh, severity, uh, so it's, it's a medium severity uh, question. So if I go ahead and create this, uh, this ticket, you can see that we post into the thread, hey, a ticket has been created, and a couple of other things uh, have happened here at the same time. So, one is that the user has gotten a message from help with their actual ticket. Uh, so this is ticket number 26. It's requested by Mike. 
uh, Mike needs a password reset uh, and it's currently unassigned. And Mike can, can see all of that. At the same time, this ticket has shown up in our triage channel. Uh, so remember, this is a channel that just the members of our IT team can see. You can see that we have the same ticket here, ticket number 26, and we have some more options. We can assign this ticket to myself if I want to, um, and that'll go ahead and assign the ticket, or I can reply here. Uh, and so you can see tickets assigned here, or I can go ahead and reply right here um, on the message in Teams. So I can say, hey, I'm going to fix that for you. When I send that message, I'm kind of playing both sides of the house here. I'm the agent and I'm the, the user. Mike is, is both of those. Um, then you can see that the user gets an update in their direct message from Mike saying, hey, I'm gonna fix that for you. And same thing, Mike can respond and say, awesome, thanks, Mike, um, and reply here uh, from their direct message. And this is really the core of, of the how product here. So we're syncing between the thread with the, the requester or the reporter in the case if you use Jira um, and we're syncing that with the conversation with the agent who's actually managing the request. And the, the really powerful thing here is that those conversations can exist inside of your chat tool and you can just have the conversation right inside of your chat tool or those conversations can be integrated and synced with a, uh, a third-party system like Jira Service Management or Zendesk, or you can use HALP as your standalone ticketing system as well. Um, and I'm not actually sure, uh, oh yeah, so, so this ticket has uh, been automatically integrated with uh, Jira Service Management. Um, and so if you click out onto this link, uh, that will take you directly to the ticket in Jira Service Management. Uh, same with, with this uh, link right here will actually take you to the agent view of that ticket in Jira Service Management. I can only share uh, one, one screen at a time, but you basically can open up that ticket in Jira and you could reply from Jira. Same thing, we're gonna sync all those conversations and, and everything that happens um, uh, right, right there as well. So. Um, that's sort of the, the basics of, of HALP and, and what it looks like in Teams. I know a lot of folks are, are Slack users on the, on the call today, um, so unfortunately can't show that, that today, but it's a very similar concept. You have a channel where, where a user can open a request. You have a triage channel where, where the agents can manage the requests, um, and then you have the ability to integrate that with uh, whatever ticketing system uh, you're currently using. So yep. um, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. First one, while I promote everybody to the panel, um, the Atlassian ecosystem is getting a bit complicated. So uh, you have now Jira service management, you have the application formerly known as Ops Genie, which also had a bunch of integrations with Slack and a bunch of interaction with Slack. Um, Jira itself has a bunch of interaction with Slack and integration possibilities with Slack. So help us a bit to, to organize this, this landscape. So what does HALP have that the others do not have? Or, or is, that, is HALP going to replace the functionality in Ops Genie over time? So what's happening? How will that play out? Because yeah, it, it, at, least from, at least from my perspective, uh, I'm not that technical. Some of the stuff looks redundant. Sorry for that, but um, it yeah. looks okay. But some of the stuff I could do with Ops Genie, for example. Not not everything, but some of it, especially in general mm -hmm. service management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so um, a, a couple of things. I mean, so I think the the general trend line for team. The, okay, so I say first thing to think to think about is uh, I do think there is a pretty clear distinction, at least in my mind, between should I be using JIRA project management or JIRA service management? Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, sort of the first decision you have to make is what kind of work am I trying to do? If you're trying to manage a backlog and you have an engineering team who has 
way too much work coming into them and that work all needs to be prioritized. That's where you need a project management solution where you're just working through a backlog and prioritizing things. If you have a service team, so a team that is managing requests and every single request needs to get answered because each one is a, a problem or an issue, that's where you need a service management solution where you have SLAs and you have response times and, and resolution times. So I think that's sort of like the, the first thing where there is a pretty big difference in how the team is working. We live, the, the world that I think about and the world that I live primarily in is the service request side of the house. And I agree with you, there's uh, Atlassian sort of has a, a, a mishmash of a lot of different solutions and things in that world right now. The general trend is that everything is moving towards becoming a part of a complete ITSM solution within Jira service management, right? So you saw with, with the JSM announcement, they're moving a lot of the ops genie functionality into Jira service management. So that, that comes included. A lot of the confluence functionality is getting moved into Jira service management from a knowledge base perspective so that you have knowledge, you have on-call and alerts, and you have uh, your sort of core help desk ticketing. What we're doing with HALP is we're also bringing a lot of the setup and configuration of HALP into your Jira service management experience. So that'll be coming out pretty soon, um, sort of in the next couple of months where inside of, and they announced this as a part of the JSM launch as well, inside of JSM, you will be, when you set up configuring chat, you will just be adding help to your, your Slack or Microsoft Teams instance. And then you can do your configuration of help fr from within JSM. So that I think, I think from a, at least configuration perspective, we're trying to bring everything under one house uh, to, to live within the, the JSM sphere. Um, and uh, how, from Halp's perspective, the primary thing we're really trying to be really good at and make amazing is that experience of I'm a, uh, a person who has an issue and wants to get it resolved and making that really easy to do from, from, your, from your chat solution, which is a different thing than on-call alerts, which is sort of like what the Optioning world does in project management, which is what the Jira and Jira for Slack uh, part of the world does. So we're working on it. I, I can't, I wouldn't tell you that I have, that we have it totally figured out. Uh, we are aware that there's like a lot going on and we're trying to make it a more cohesive and, and over time easier to, to use solution. There's my roommate. What's up, man. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, uh, the, uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, Yeah, so so I, I don't I don't think we have a, a like short term solution that's going to be amazing, but um, I do think we're heading in the right direction with with making it a more cohesive uh, experience. Oh, the other thing I was just going to say is as Jira service management gets more and more robust and complex as an ITSM solution, help is really positioned to be the lighter weight, easy to use, almost like Trello is to Jira is what help uh, will be to to Jira service management. Okay, so that's that's an understand that's that's a clear positioning. So that makes yep. sense. Um, we have two questions in the chat. Hubert, if you do not have one first, I will just yeah, I, yeah maybe read the question. I have some technical questions. Okay, but go ahead with the Frank first. Okay, how uh, the first question is how do you plan on supporting companies with a Jira behind a firewall? So, yeah, sure, good question. So, um, uh, Slack and Teams are both cloud-based products. Um, and the way that help works is we're syncing information from those products into your Jira instance. So when you're using help behind a firewall, what we, we basically require you to do is to uh, whitelist an IP address. Um, and when you, when you whitelist that address, uh, that allows us to communicate from our cloud servers uh, through your firewall and into your Jira instance. It doesn't really make that much sense to uh, be taking stuff that's all cloud conversations and and hiding those behind a firewall. Um, so unfortunately, that that's sort of the only solution that that really makes sense is is for us to uh, have a, a direct IP address that we can we can connect to. Um, 
So, yeah. And uh, the next two questions, how do you handle differences in the user base? Uh, example, Slack Teams user is not in Jira. And how do you handle the unification and se security that an unknown user to Jira gets information from tickets of other users? Yeah, sure. So um, if a, a Slack or Teams user is not in Jira, um, it depends somewhat on the settings and configuration that you have, but we will generally create a new user in Jira based on their Slack or Teams profile information. Um, if you have, you have to give us, you have to have API permissions for us to be able to do that. So depending on your security, that, that might not be possible, in which case we would just not set the reporter of that, of that request. Um, the, yeah, this is a somewhat nuanced question. So I, I I'm happy to, uh, elaborate a little bit more, Frank, depending on exactly what you're, you're looking for, but, uh, the only way to sign in to, to help is via either Slack or Microsoft Teams. So you can think of that as sort of our SSO solution. And because everyone SSOs in through Slack or Teams, we use the membership that they have in different channels in Slack or in different channels in Teams to determine which tickets they are able to see. So if they're an end user, they actually can only see their tickets inside of the private messages or channels that they're a member of in Slack or Teams. If they're an agent, they'll be able to see the tickets that they are, are members of channels of that those tickets are available in. So if you have an IT triage team, that IT team is going to have all of their tickets in that triage team or triage channel. And that's gonna be what they also are have, have visibility into inside of HAL. So. The short answer is the entire permission structure is based on the membership that you have in these different Slack or Microsoft Teams channels. And we, we follow the permissioning structure that you have there. Okay. Uh, Hubert, what was your question? Um, how about the cloud instance of Jira? Yeah, so the help will be included or it's additionally, I need to pay for that because I see that you replace some of the Atlassian product already like add-on. And then I found out that I need to create an account in Hulk right now also to get used to that. Can you tell me more about details about Isarish? How does it work right now? Because that's something that I investigated recently, but I didn't have the time to, 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 to spend more time on this. And I found that you will be here so I can ask you directly What's the idea so for that? Or maybe it will be included already, not, not as an add-on that you need to get from marketplace. Right, yeah, so a couple of things there. So um, uh, as of right now, so today, as we're recording January 4th, you do have to add the help add-on from the marketplace, which is what gives us permissions to actually do what we need to do in the in cloud. You also have to add help to either Slack or Teams which creates an instance with help. And then you have to pay for that separately from your JSM subscription. And we have a couple of different tiers. It starts at $25 per agent per month. Um, that's as of today, January 4th. As I mentioned, we're going to be launching relatively soon uh, some uh, configuration functionality inside of JSM where you'll be able to configure help right from your JSM settings. Uh, the alongside that we'll be, we will be launching a free tier of help that will allow you to connect to your first channel and map your first request type and that will all be included for free as a part of JSM. Um, so it, effectively you'll have a limited set of, of features and functionality that you'll get for free um, as a part of your, your JSM subscription you'll be able to connect and configure that all right within JSM and then if you want additional functionality you would upgrade your, your help subscription at that point. If you wanted to have a bunch of different re request types and map that to uh, different Slack channels or different forms and, and have all that connected, that's what you would, um, then you would you would pay for help at that point. So I, it will still, so let's make me clear. So it's still required to use the help.com to the in, to make the men in the middle integration, right? So I need to go to the Protor with legal, te uh, legal team to get permission to use that service or it will be like the past, like just Jira add-on and no account in the help and so on. 
in as of right now, you do still have to. In the future, mm -hmm. you're not going to have to go to help. Okay. Okay. I yeah. see. So in the future, yeah. it will work like with the old Jira connector to Slack. I see. Something like that. No extra echo. Right. It'll have its own settings page. page. Mm -hmm. Right, it'll have its own okay, setting cool. page in, in project. You still have to add the help app, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So I, depending on your team security and everything, uh, then you you might still need to get approval. Yeah, but, because yeah. for us adding an add-on, it's totally different process than adding the new service, right? Because mm. if you're adding the totally new service, you need to get all the approvals and so on. And if you are just adding the add-ons, let's say the Atlassian is taking care theoretically of this, or maybe not about security, but like um, handling the account and uh, uh, user IDs and so on. Right. Yeah. And the add-on will be automatically added to everybody's instances in the future as well. So that, that part of the process you won't have to do. And then I, I don't need any other like third-party add-ons for Slack integration and so on, because now I can see on the Atlas and Marketplace, if you just put the Slack or Microsoft, you get like 20 of them. So in the future, let's say I will use just half and that's it for all the integration. Cool. Right. Okay. And pre-installed even better. Nice. I have a clarification question. Uh, thanks. Hi, uh, I'm Stefan from Utility. I seem to recall uh, a presentation about the, the Roper presentation where, where you just, just as you talked about that uh, Hub will be integrated in Jira Service Management. And you just mentioned that it's going to be free with a one channel subscription in the free tier. Do you mean this is the free tier for the Jira free plans or is it always just that? And it's, so it's still a separate product that you would always need to book even if you are on an advanced plan, for example, and a premium right. subscription. Yeah, so so your JSM subscription and your help subscription are independent. Like you could be on JSM premium and you can be on help free. Okay. Or you could be on JSM free and you could be on help help premium. And that just depends. Maybe you have a really simple JSM instance, but you have a really complex Slack instance and you want a really complex configuration for that. So that yeah, the two things are are separate. Thanks. Yep. Um, I, I think we, Frank had one question or, as well, but yeah, whatever, that, he had an addition, so. that's what that was what something I wanted to say. He had an additional question that um, uh, user deactivation of users has to be dealt with separately, right? So if question. you deactivate a user in Slack or in Microsoft Teams, they will no longer have access to help. Okay. So that is one of the nice things since we it's, it, it is SSO via Slack and Teams. You don't need to, to deal with that. It, it just is kind of done because they don't have, they can't sign in anymore. Okay. So could that, that's the, the point about how you have always the perspective from the chat tool, not the, right. not the Jira side. Okay. Um, as you mentioned, uh, that help will be to, to Jira, what Trello is to Jira, what help will be to, um, um, JSM. JSM, exactly. Uh, is a is a is a combination of help with Trello thinkable planned? Does that make sense, or is that just something that I'm? I don't know. Just went yeah, to my head because you mentioned Trello, and then I. Right. Suppose, uh. it, it's something we're we're definitely thinking about. I think the way I think about it is. Uh, you have these two types of work, as I mentioned, project yeah. management work and, and service request work. Sometimes things are in the gray area and they bleed between. So you have a, a thing that starts out as, a, as an IT ticket and turns into an, an engineering uh, item in the backlog, or you have something that gets into the engineering backlog that's actually in an IT ticket or, or vice versa. So I do think there are interesting situations where work will flow between. For right now, we have a, a Zapier integration. And so if you have a help request that needs to get escalated into a, a Trello card, you can do that via via Zapier. But I could see us over time um, building more direct first party concepts like that. It probably would be not, all of our integrations right now are a very deep two-way sync. We sync fields, we sync comments, we sync 
statuses, like everything where you, you can really go quite deep on it. I think if we were to do something with Trello, it would be more of a, Hey, I had this request. It came in this way. It actually needs to go to Trello and it would just fire off to Trello. And then yep. we don't worry about it anymore. So, so yeah, that's, we haven't quite figured it out, but that's sort of what we're thinking. Okay. Um, I had another question. Um, additional team chat tools. Um, mm -hmm. Thinking especially about the folks at Grape, for example. Uh, they had a very interesting presentation here. They are not quite the same as Slack and Teams. They go a bit further, but uh, any uh, any plans for other team chat tools beyond? Yeah, Teams? so we, we just launched Teams in November. Um, so we're still very early there. We've been a Slack okay. only product for about a, a year and a half. We, we really launched officially to the world in, in early 2019, um, kind of April, 2019. So um, we, we tend to go really deep with our integrations and make them best of breed uh, type, type integrations. And so doing another one is a really big deal for us. It took us okay. a big amount of effort to do the, the Teams integration. As far as I can see right now, Teams and Slack cover 90 plus percent of the, of the market. It's they're, yeah. they're definitely the duopoly of this market. And so uh, what, what is good is that the way we've uh, architected the system, it's not super hard for, it's not impossible for us to add another. It just, it just we want to do it well. And so uh, I'd be super happy if there was a third or fourth player that got enough market share for it to make sense for us. But and we're kind of keeping our eye on on different folks to see if any of them get good adoption. I actually fully expect that sometime in the next five years, there will be a new player that will take over a lot of market share. But as of right now, we, we haven't seen that that uh, platform come out yet that it makes sense for us to spend the time. So, and if I wanted to integrate help into third party, I always have the Sepia route or whatever. I could use that, for example. Also myself, or is that? If you want it, we, we don't currently have an API. So okay. we you, you couldn't do it yourself. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't where... do it myself. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious, I'm, I'm kind of collecting opinions uh, about uh, Slack being bought by Salesforce <laughs> uh, and the bright and happy future that waits for all of us uh, <laughs> because of that. Um, what's your opinion? What's your crystal ball telling you about that sure. uh, and, and the future in that area? So yeah, I mean, look, I think I think it was a very smart move by Salesforce. First of all, uh, yes. great, great move by them. I think it it is a sort of very logic. My the logic part of my brain can explain to you many reasons why it's a very good thing for Slack and a very good thing for apps that use Slack in terms of getting more enterprise distribution, uh, all the Salesforce people selling the product, it's going to accelerate the growth of, of Slack and make it uh, from a market penetration perspective, it's going to make it much more uh, broadly sold and, and adopted, I think, which is, which is great. They can be much more flexible with things like price and they, they know how to sell to these big organizations. They have a very great and robust app marketplace, which, which is, is good. Um, I think for folks like us, so all the logical parts of my brain are like, yeah, this is really good. I can explain a bunch of reasons why it's really good. I do think there's just a small sort of emotional piece of me that's just a little bummed. Like Slack was a very cool and sexy story that we all love. That was this kind of tech darling company that that grew so fast. It was the fastest growing SaaS company and everyone, I don't know. It just, it just had this mystique to it and so for it to now just be another salesforce product i don't know <laughs> like okay. not my favorite thing in the world but oh. um i i get it it's a good business move so it, my my i have always this this uh, i had I had always this impression that slack was kind of strategic for atlassian as a partnership uh, and now it's all of a sudden that's a salesforce partnership which is kind of an interesting place to be for atlassian uh, being that close to Salesforce in a way. Um, 
that's very interesting, especially because digital products and selling digital products, doing service for digital products and all that stuff. So it's not the worst thing that could have happened to Atlassian, um, especially they, because they saved a lot of money and didn't have to buy it themselves. So that is, and, that's the, and they won a Salesforce partnership in the deal. So that's the, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity there for Atlassian as well. I don't know. Yep. Yep. I totally agree. I mean, the really long, the, the big competitor for everybody selling B2B software is Microsoft. And so um, for, for us to have sort of Salesforce taking a very clear, big stance of we're competing, uh, which is, I think, part of what this move was, I, I, I think is a good thing for Atlassian. So. Yeah. Okay. I have a slightly different question, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, you position help as a conversational ticketing tool. I'm curious about, I mean, I, I get this year you are uh, probably busy with the JSM integration and all this, uh, but uh, I'm curious about your future plans around this conversation ticketing concept. Do you mm -hmm. plan to integrate more artificial intelligence, more bot-like things, more mm -hmm. conversations around this kind of stuff, just maybe a little bit of an outlook? Yeah, totally. So we have a product called Help Answers I unfortunately couldn't show it off today because it's only currently available in our Slack product. Um, but we are spent planning to spend quite a bit of, uh, of time uh, and energy on that product this year. Uh, the way it works right now is um, you uh, can create answers from a message in Slack or your, inside of your chat tool. So you, a, a question comes in, you answer it, and you go, oh man, that's a very common question that we get. You mark that that answer that you had to the common question as an answer, and then you you tag it with specific keywords that might trigger that answer to, to pop up, um, and that then allows that answer to be automatically recommended either to the user directly or to the agent inside of, of the the chat tool. So that product uh, is uh, has been out for a while for our Slack customers, and and a lot of them really love it and want it to be even more powerful and more flexible. Uh, last year, we added a Confluence integration to it. So you can actually pull in all of your Confluence uh, pages from your knowledge base and it'll automatically set the labels to be the keywords and just start recommending answers right away. So um, customers are super excited about it. Uh, and we, we have a lot of ideas around how we can make that more powerful and, and more uh, useful to, to our customers. One is just bringing it into Microsoft Teams, which it, it currently isn't at all. Um, and then uh, making that sort of machine learning side of it uh, a lot more robust than it currently is right now, which as I mentioned, is a fairly simple keyword matching system, um, making it actually uh, reinforced based on answers that are correct. And we have sort of that whole loop there. So um, yeah, I, I do think there's a lot of potential for um, tickets to be deflected or for answers to be recommended to, to users and uh, sort of a self-help uh, type capability. Um, so. Thank you very much, Fletcher. That was interesting. And I learned a bit more about help and got a bit of clarification uh, where all the conversational ticketing is going at Atlassian. Um, and I'm looking forward to the summit. I guess you will have a lot of stuff to present around JSM and the future of conversational ticketing in the Atlassian universe. Because after the, the large announcements that we had outside the summit in the last couple of months, uh, there must be something really special waiting for us at summit. So I'm, I can't wait. I'm speculating the hell out of this. So what will they tell us at summit if they already told us that server will end before that and whatnot. <laughs> so I'm, I'm waiting for something big. So, so get working, bring us something right. big. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm not actually sure either. So your guess is as good as mine right now, but uh, I, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll try and cook something up for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you again. That was very educational. Have a good time. Stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, see you on the other side of all this. One day there will be a summit again uh, in a windowless room in the desert in Nevada, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> uh, where we can maybe meet in person. And looking yeah. forward to that. So.
Until then, great. have a good time. Good Thanks. night.